The land of skyscrapers, wealth, money and luxury. In other words, Qatar, one of the motherlands of all, is almost a land of pump. The state called Qatar is a Persian Gulf country located in the east of the Arabian Peninsula. They gained their independence in 1971 and have been managed by the Althani family since the 19th century. Although Arabic is the official language, many people living there also use English and French. In addition, their capital is Doha and it takes its name from Ad Doha, which means big tree in Arabic. Before moving on to the details of the modern world's Qatar, let's take a brief look at the history of that country, as we always do. For many years, Qatar was ruled under the orders of the regional tribal chiefs. As it was a place where nomadic tribes lived, there were constant changes in the region. In the 19th century, the administration of Qatar passed to Mohammed Al Thani, the great-grandfather of the current Emir. Qatar even took place under the rule of our ancestors, the Ottomans. The year showed the periods of 1852 and until 1913, there was Ottoman domination. With the outbreak of World War I, the Ottomans withdrew from Qatar and Qatar was occupied by the British. The British exploited Qatar for many years and only withdrew from Qatar in 1971. After that day, Qatar officially continued to exist as an independent state. When we come to today's Qatar, I can say that life there does not contain strict rules as in other Arab countries, contrary to popular belief. At least we can state this based on our observations. In fact, this situation must have attracted the attention of many people who could not find a job in Europe and Asia as there has been a great brain drain towards Qatar in recent years. So much so that many workers, especially white collar workers, started to earn money in Qatar that they could not earn in their country since almost every one of the Qatari families is the boss and they cannot find personnel to work in their own companies. Those who come to work from poor or middle segment countries also benefit from Qatari bosses. So there is a really big economic cycle in Qatar, my friends. When you go to the cafes there, you can come across many Indians and Filipinos. Even with the most mundane job, you can make thousands of dollars each month. But the thing is, in order to find a job in the country, you need to find sponsors who can be your reference, otherwise, they do not easily employ everyone. If you manage to get any job, with the money you earn, you can buy almost anything that will make you happy, whether in Qatar or in your own country. So you can be sure that you won't be working for a full stomach there. So, what has this country, which has almost no historical past, achieved to become so rich? I think almost everyone who watched the video knows the answer to this question. So let's explain, located in the heart of the Middle East, this country was once a place of only fishing and pearl trade. While it was roasted in its own oil, it took flight in the economy after the discovery of oil reserves. After this change, almost every people in Qatar became rich as if they had won the lottery, and their level of welfare rose to an unbelievable level. Let me explain this way. The country has suddenly become one of the states with the largest gas reserves in the world. That's why Qataris have turned the corner today by exporting only natural gas without the need to produce anything else. They easily import almost every remaining consumable material from outside and do not bother to produce it. To put it simply, the amount of natural gas they currently have it is big enough to make Qatar richer for 250 years. In this sense, it is one of the top five natural gas producing countries in the world. Thanks to this wealth, they buy many important companies around the world or cooperate directly with them. There are many examples of this in Turkey. For example, almost all of the shares of QNB Finance Bank, one of the banks operating in Turkey, belong to a Qatari company. Again, football fans know that the rights of Digiturk, which broadcasts Turkish league matches, were purchased by the Qatari company Bean Media Group. In addition, more than half of the shares of Banvit, one of Turkey's most rooted chicken brands, were transferred to a Qatar-affiliated company. There are also Qatari companies among the partners of stores like Boya and automotive giant brands like BMC. Not only that, 
Cateris are buying many houses from our country and they continue to make different investments. On the other hand, the country of Qatar is shown as one of the safest countries in the world today. Little to no theft, would you believe, even if you forget your key at the door, no one will deign to steal your house. This is what logically should be, why would anyone risk their freedom and smear their name in a country where everyone is rich? Since there is so much peace in the country, Qataris are just as much in love with their emir. You can see the photos of the emirs of Qatar in government offices, streets and squares almost everywhere. However, something else might catch your attention while you are wandering around the squares. Population distribution in Qatar is somewhat uneven. There are more than 300 men for every 100 women. In other words, the number of men in the country is much more than women. Therefore, if a foreign woman wants to start a life in Qatar, she can obtain citizenship even if she is an immigrant. I should also say that men can dress however they want, but women always wear black. Life there is generally calm and still. It is not known whether it is because of the weather, but there is no rush in the country and many jobs are slow. In addition, there are some important facts about Qatar that I need to say. Education is free, as are most of the hospitals in the country. The people do not have the right to choose the government by voting and it is strictly forbidden to criticize the emir who runs the country. If you do this, you will be causing trouble for nothing. In addition, alcohol is sold only in places such as hotels and very rarely. Even if you find a place to buy alcohol, your salary is taken into account when purchasing it. For example, if you have a salary of $3,000, you can only buy 10 of alcohol. That is, $300. Bringing alcohol into the country is also not accepted in any way. On the other hand, weekends in the country are not Saturdays and Sundays, as in ours, but Fridays and Saturdays. If you are eating somewhere during Friday prayers on Fridays, they may demand that you leave the table suddenly, because they close almost every workplace during Friday prayers. So they have great religious sensitivities. Again, Due to the rules of society, it is almost impossible for women to swim in bikinis on public beaches. There is hardly any public beach anyway. In order to swim comfortably, you need to go to the country's expensive hotels or luxury beaches. What do you think the people of such a rich country do during the day? Cataras enjoy watching camel races, so much so that they give Range Rover cars as gifts to camel owners who win camel races. This tradition has been going on in their country for many years. Cataris also have a great interest in football. They really enjoy watching a football match. Let us remind you that the 2020 to World Cup will be held in Qatar. In this sense, it seems that we will hear the name of Qatar more frequently in the future. The eagle is the favorite animal of the Cataris. Many Cataris keep eagles in their homes and go hunting with them there are even those who keep tigers at home and go shopping with tigers. In summary, if you are making money in Qatar, life is fine and quality works. Especially if you are a university graduate, you can search for job opportunities in Qatar. Because their investments in their countries are increasing day by day and they are constantly recruiting personnel. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Goodbye.